Welcome to the UNV Certification Program. The topic of this video is Common CCTV Interface Introduction. This training shall enable you to get to know the basics of different video and audio interfaces, understand the usage of different network interfaces, and know the major storage-related interfaces in CCTV systems. A complete CCTV system may have different devices, but they can be divided into five components according to their functions, including video and audio acquisition subsystem, transmission subsystem, management and control subsystem, video display subsystem, video and audio storage subsystem. When we set up a complete CCTV system, different interfaces will be found in devices and different connectors for each interface will be needed. For example, Analog cameras and hybrid NVRs are deployed in BNC ports, and coaxial cables will be needed when setting up them. For short-distance network connection, we have RJ45 ports to connect IP devices via pair-twisted network cables. But for a long-distance or high-speed transmission, now some devices deployed interfaces for optical fibers, such as SFP and SATA, SAS, can also be found in storage systems. After we set up IP cameras with the NVR, one of the best ways to display the views the cameras captured is to play the views on a monitor via different video display ports, a display control system is even better. These video display ports may differ in decoders, TV sets, LCD monitors, large screens, etc., but all in all, they are common. In this presentation, we will introduce video and audio related interfaces first. Then we will talk about the network interfaces as well as the storage related interfaces. We will start with video and audio interfaces first. Let's get started. As we just mentioned that there are many different interfaces in a complete CCTV system. But when we talk about a certain interface or port, it might have different usages. For example, in CCTV systems, BNC is a common port for analog cameras and hybrid NVRs. But actually, in some IP cameras like Fisheye which has a BNC port attached, the BNC port is very functional when connected to a project tester, which displays the Fisheye's view and makes setup and installation of Fisheye much easier. VGA and HDMI are two common ports in CCTV systems, we will find them on the back of NVRs, monitors, etc., and some LCD monitors still support DVI. And for LCD monitors that support high resolution, the DP interface is deployed. In the next few pages, we will give you a brief introduction to the ports we mentioned. Now let's start with the BNC port first. The BNC connector is also called Bayonet Nielkan Selman connector. It's a miniature quick connect or disconnect radio frequency connector used for coaxial cable. It transmits analog signals. In CCTV systems, the BNC connector is used to connect analog cameras via the coaxial cable. Now it also supports audio signal transmission via coaxial cables. And for some IP cameras, the BNC port can transmit analog video signals when connected to a project tester. It has been used for composite video on commercial video devices as well. Next, we will introduce the VGA port. VGA stands for Video Graphics Array, which is an older port that was first introduced in 1987. It has 15 pins divided into three rows and it only carries analog data. And because it only carries analog data, the quality of the video may degrade at higher resolutions and longer cable lengths. The supported maximum resolution is 1080p. The VGA port was used on the now extinct bulky CRT monitors, but you can still find VGA ports on some new equipment, such as NVRs and new LCD monitors. As we mentioned at the beginning, the VGA is an old design and supports analog signals only, which has a weak anti-interference ability. 
thus color distortion may exist. To expand the accessibility of different signals and address problems like color distortion in VGA. In 1999, the DVI, which stands for Digital Visual Interface, was developed. It has succeeded the VGA port and was designed to provide uncompressed, high-quality video to LCD monitors. There are three different versions of a DVI standard. There's DVI-A where the A stands for analog. And it's used to send only analog signals. There's DVI-D where the D stands for digital. And this is used to send only digital signals. And there is also DVI-I where the I stands for integrated. It's used to send both analog and digital signals. Now on the ports that are able to send digital signals, which would be the DVI-D and DVI-I, there are two different options in the DVI standard, single link and dual link. The difference is that dual link has six extra pins and these pins are what allow for a higher resolution than single link. Dual link DVI doubles the video bandwidth, which has a max resolution of 2560 by 1600 whereas single-link DVI has a max resolution of 1920 by 1200. In the digital age, on the one hand, the amount of data transmitted is increasing. And on the other hand, it is necessary to ensure the high quality of digital transmission, so the HDMI of high-speed transmission came into being. Now let's move on to HDMI, which stands for a high-definition multimedia interface. HDMI is the dominant video port that is used today. It has a broad range of use in electronic products such as TVs, monitors, NVRs, laptops, mobile devices, and so on. HDMI was developed in 2002 and was designed for transmitting uncompressed video and audio digital data through a single cable. And the audio and video signals can be transmitted simultaneously. As one of the best standards for high definition in consumer electronics, it delivers crystal clear video as well as audio. No signal conversion is necessary, nor is there a loss of video quality when a DVI to HDMI adapter is used. Compared to DVI, HDMI can transmit digital audio signals and add support for HDCP while providing better DDC options. The length of a HDMI cable can reach up to 15 meters. Since HDMI 1.4 was released in 2009, HDMI added another channel for data, which has the capability of network communication. The connected devices that use this feature will give HDMI the ability to send and receive data at 100 bit per second Ethernet. So in addition to video and audio on a single cable, the HDMI cable will have another ability of Ethernet networking. In 2017, HDMI 2.1 was released, which added support for a higher resolution and refresh rates, with support for 10K video at 120Hz. And it can also support a max bandwidth of 48 bit per second. For consumers, HDMI technology not only provides clear picture quality but also greatly simplifies the installation of systems due to the same cable for audio and video. In order to achieve higher resolution and data transmission rate, there is also a digital display interface called DisplayPort. The DisplayPort is developed by Visa, which stands for the Video Electronics Standards Association, and debuted in 2006. It uses packets instead of a clocking signaling scheme to transmit data. The display port was primarily used to connect a video source to a display device, such as a computer monitor. It can carry USB, audio, and other forms of data as well. And the audio and the video can be transmitted simultaneously, although each can be transmitted without the other. It's a high-performance interface that was designed to replace the older VGA and DVI interfaces. The display port is backward compatible with other interfaces, such as HDMI and DVI, through the use of either active or passive adapters. 
Unlike HDMI, the DisplayPort is a royalty-free product. In October 2022, DisplayPort 2.1 was released, which has a max resolution of 16K at 60Hz. And the max total bandwidth can reach 80 bit per second. One of the main advantages that it has over HDMI is that it has multi monitor capabilities. The DisplayPort allows you to use multiple monitors by connecting them in a daisy chain configuration. Another advantage that DisplayPort has over HDMI is that it has a locking mechanism that keeps the cable locked in place, whereas HDMI does not have a locking mechanism. In this comparison table, we can read the summary of each video display port. The VGA port supports analog signals only, but it does not have cross-dot black and white chrominance and luminance. It has the longest cable length among others, which can be reached up to 30 meters. The DVI, HDMI, and DP all support digital signals. Though the cable length declined, the supported data transmission rate and resolution increases. The HDMI and DP also support audio signals and are backward compatible with DVI and VGA ports with adapters. DP supports multi-screen display and locking mechanism as well. In CCTV systems, you will also find some common audio interfaces in devices like smart keyboards, IP cameras, NVRs, and so on, which transmit audio signals. For example, the 3.5mm audio jack, Phoenix connector, RCA jack, BNC port, etc. The RCA connector is a type of electrical connector commonly used to carry audio and video signals. The name RCA derives from the company Radio Corporation of America, which introduced the design in the 1930s. The connector's male plug and female jack are called RCA plug and RCA jack. It is also called RCA phono connector or phono connector. RCA jacks are often used in phono inputs, a set of input jacks usually located on the rear panel of a preamp, mixer, or amplifier especially on early radio sets, to which a phonograph or turntable is attached. In CCTV systems, we will find RCA jacks on the rear panel of an NVR. They are often color-coded, yellow for composite video, red for the right audio channel, and white or black for the left channel of stereo audio. As an NVR uses these jacks to transmit audio signals, so you will only find the white or black and red jacks on the back of an NVR. The Phoenix connector is also called Euroblock, which is short for European-style terminal block. It is an extra-low voltage pluggable connector and terminal block combination commonly used for microphone and line-level audio signals. The Phoenix connector mostly is used to connect a mic, speaker, and alarm devices. In CCTV systems, the Phoenix connector is mostly used to connect alarm devices on NVR. There are also IP cameras that support both alarm and audio access through Phoenix connectors. The 3.5mm audio jack is mostly used for portable applications, such as smartphones. But now some IP cameras and smart devices also adopted this audio jack as it supports audio in and out over the same port, which can save the cost. Now we also have some cameras that have built-in mic and speaker. Mic, short for microphone, converts sound waves into analogous electrical waves. It contains a flexible diaphragm composed of film or foil that vibrates as it makes contact with the sound. Speaker converts an electrical audio signal into a corresponding sound. In CCTV systems, a speaker refers to the device that plays the sound picked up by the camera's mic, and the sound volume can be adjusted. We just introduced some common video display ports and audio interfaces. In the next part, we're going to talk about the different types of network ports that are used in networking in CCTV systems and these ports will vary depending on the type of network and the cable they connect.
The first one we are going to introduce is the Ethernet port, which plays an important role in setting up CCTV systems networking. We use this port to connect IP cameras and NVRs to the router or switch so they can have internet access. This port is also called RJ45 port and is by far the most common network port. Ethernet network ports are used in local area networks and mostly adopt twisted pair Ethernet cables. Now Ethernet twisted pair cables come in two different wiring standards. One standard is called 568A and the other standard is 568B. These are the wiring order for both the A and B standards. The orders are based on the color of the wires. The only difference between the A and B standards is the green wires are swapped with the orange. And it doesn't really matter which standard you use. Both standards do the same thing. Based on the wiring standards, there are also two types of twisted pair cables. One is straight cable, the other is crossover cable, and each has a different purpose. So whether you choose the A or B wiring standard, if both ends of the cable are wired using the same standard, then this is known as a straight cable, which is also known as a patch cable. A straight cable allows signals to pass through from end to end. A straight cable is used to connect computers to hubs, switches, routers, or modems, or in other words, it's used to connect to similar devices together. This is by far the most common cable that's used on local area networks. A crossover cable is also used on local area networks, but it's not as common as a straight cable. A crossover cable is created when both ends of the cable are wired using two different standards. For example, one end is wired using the A standard and the other end is wired using the B standard. Crossover cables are used to connect two similar devices together. For example, Crossover cables are used to connect two computers directly to each other without using a hub or switch, and they can be also used to connect hubs to hubs, or switches to switches. So they are used to connect two of the same devices together. In CCTV systems, we have some devices like IP cameras, unicorns, NVRs, IPSAN, etc. supporting SFP port, which has a high-speed network transmission. SFP, short for small form factor, was first introduced in 2001. It is a compact, hot pluggable transceiver, which can realize electrical and optical signal conversion to extend the original link distance. It's most commonly used in 1G network transmission over short and long distances based on different IEEE standards. It is also known as Mini GBIC as it has the same functions as GBIC but takes less space than it. There are two types of fibers in SFP. The multi-mode fiber is for short distance transmission. And for short distance transmission, there is 1000 base SX SFP. The SX in 1000 base SX SFP means short range. This transceiver works on 850 nanometers wavelength over multimode, and the length of the LC fiber cable it adopts can reach up to 550 meters. For long distance transmission, the 1000 base LX SFP supports a 10 kilometers link operating on a 1310 nanometers wavelength over single mode duplex LC cables. What's more, 1000 base EX, 1000 base ZX and 1000 base BX SF can achieve even further distances of 40 km, 80 km, and 160 km respectively over single mode duplex LC cables. Now let's move on to storage interfaces. SATA, short for Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, is a computer bus interface that connects host bus adapters to mass storage devices such as hard disk drives, optical drives, and solid-state drives. It succeeded the earlier parallel ATA standard to become the predominant interface for storage devices. 
SATA was announced in 2000 in order to provide several advantages over the earlier PATA interface such as reduced cable size and cost. And SATA supports hot plugging. In 2009, the full 3.0 version was released, and it enables the third-generation SATA interfaces to run with a native transfer rate of 6.0 bit per second. SAS is a new generation of SCSI technology. It is the same as the popular serial ATA hard disk using serial technology to achieve higher transmission speed, and it improves internal space by shortening the connection line. SAS is a new interface developed after the parallel SCSI interface to improve the performance, availability, and scalability of the storage system, providing compatibility with serial ATA hard drives. This means SATA drives may be plugged into SAS controllers and communicate on the same physical cable as native SAS disks, but SATA controllers cannot handle SAS disks. It also reduces the cost of disk arrays and is easy to install. With the latest SAS version, the transfer rate can reach up to 22.5 bit per second. After this course, you must know the basics of different video and audio interfaces, understand the usage of different network interfaces, and know the major storage-related interfaces in CCTV systems. That's all for the common CCTV interface introduction. Thanks for watching. See you next time.